Hi there, in today's video we are going to talk about the VMCA or the Minimum Speed Control Air. By the end of the video you will know what is the VMCA, why it is so important, which factors change the VMCA and what are the relationship between the VMCA and the V2 speed. Alright, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriele from pilotclimb.com and I help you to become a better pilot. So if this is what you want to do, consider subscribing to the channel so you won't miss the next content. If you want to support my job, please give it a like to the video because this really helps the channel to grow. Okay, let's talk about the VMCA. First of all, what it is? The VMCA or minimum control air speed is the speed the minimum speed at which you can fly should the critical engine of your aircraft fails and have the other uh, the other engine, the operative engine, be set on the takeoff thrust. So let's say you're on takeoff run on the ground, you rotate your aircraft, and then once you are in the air, the critical engine fails. So you're gonna have one engine that take off power still and one engine that is off completely. So what will do up? What will happen is that since you're gonna have one engine that is off and the other engine is providing you the takeoff thrust, you're gonna have this yo moment caused by the operative engine on the takeoff thrust. Okay? So if you are below the VMCA, what will happen is that if your critical engine fails, your the other operative engine will give you a yo moment due to the thrust of the operative engine that you won't be able to correct and counteract using the rudder. <clears throat> okay? So, in order to understand why it is very important, we need to know that the VMCA, this minimum speed, is all driven by the surface, the rudder and the aileron of your aircraft. But these surfaces, the rudder and the ailerons of your aircraft, they become more efficient when they have enough air around, enough airflow. So the higher the speed, the more efficient are the rudder, is the rudder and as well the ailerons. So at slow speed, you have only uh, you don't have enough uh, airflow around the surfaces thus you won't be able to contract this yo moment okay so if you take the, the same aircraft okay the same conditions let's say one aircraft has got a critical engine failure at 100 knots for example and another aircraft has got the same condition the critical engine failure but at 200 knots what will happen is that the aircraft that has the critical engine failure at 200 knots at the higher speed will be easier for the pilot to counteract the yo moment caused by the operative engine. Why? Because there is a lot of airflow that is going around these surfaces, around the rudder and the aileron, thus the pilot is, is, is a lot easier for the pilot to correct the yo moment. But because of the aircraft that is going slow, the 100 knots aircraft, it's gonna have the engine failure on the critical engine since there is only uh, the, the airflow around the, the surfaces such as the rudder and aileron is slow thus the aircraft has to use full deflection and if you're flying as well below the VMCA even using the full deflection on the rudder you won't be able to contract this your moment okay so as you can see the VMCA the minimum control airspeed is a very critical speed that you need to take into consideration when flying on a multi-engine aircraft okay there is another speed which is called vmcg that is the minimum control ground speed i made a separate video about that but this the vmca it is very important to know what is your vmca when you fly because you don't want to fly below that speed if you have an engine failure okay Fantastic. So let's analyze what are the factors that actually affect your VMCA, okay? Because the VMCA is not really a fixed value, okay? The VMCA can vary depending on your takeoff thrust, for example, and can vary depending on your center of gravity position, can vary depending on the air density, can vary depending on your altitude. So as you can see, there are lots of factors, but the main factor that actually affect your VMCA is first of all the takeoff thrust because you need to think about this okay let's say we are taking off out of a short runway so in order to take off out of a short run we need a lot of thrust let's say we need full take off, full thrust on the engines okay so let's say we are on takeoff run we rotate and then we have both engines have full thrust what will happen if the critical engine fails, the other one is providing us the, with a full thrust. So if the critical engine fails, the other engine will give us the highest yo moment because it's providing the maximum thrust, okay? So thus, 
in order to correct the zero moment provided by the operative engine, we need to use a lot of rather and errors in order to correct this, this moment. Okay, let's take another example. Let's see, let's say that now we are taking off out of a very long run. So we don't use, we don't need to use the full thrust, okay? So what will happen is that by not using the full thrust, the engines are not giving us the full thrust. They are giving, let's, giving us, let's say, 70% of the thrust, okay? So we, are, we reach the rotation speed, we rotate, and if the critical engine fails, the other, the other engine, the operative engine, is only providing us with 70 or 80% of thrust and not with 100% of thrust. Okay, so what is important? Because if the engine that is operative is, is giving us 70% of thrust, the yaw moment that we'll, we will have because of the operative engine thrust, okay, what will, have is, what will happen is that we're gonna use less rudder, okay, the aircraft will be more controllable in the, in the, in the event of the critical engine fail, okay? So, as you can see, the takeoff thrust with the full takeoff thrust, you're gonna use a lot of rudder in order to correct the yaw moment. With less thrust, you're gonna use less uh, less rudder. Thus, the VMCA when you use less takeoff thrust will be lower. Okay. Another factor is the uh, air density. For example, the air density works pretty much the same. Okay. The less the air density, the slower will be your VMCA because the engine will produce less thrust. It's kind of the same because it's all about your moment because the higher the thrust, the higher will be the your moment caused by the operative engines. And the lower is the your moment, okay, the lower your moment, the easier for you will be to correct and control the plane in case you have, uh, in, ca in case your critical engine will fail, okay. So as you can see, there are factors that really affect your VMC. So, and thus, for every take we need to make the take of calculations and make sure we know exactly what are our speeds. Okay, there is during the take of another speed which is very close related to the VMCA, which is the V2. The V2 is the takeoff safety speed, is the speed at which, in case you have one engine out, you won't be you won't uh, lose control over planes for sure. Okay. Normally, normally the VMCA is always below the V2. Okay, so the V2 add another safety margin, okay, above the VMCA, okay, because let's say when you said, when the manufacturer certified the aircraft, they say, okay, the VMCA is really the limit, okay, it's really the minimum speed at which you should fly in order to maintain the controllability of your aircraft during the takeoff, uh, in case you have a, a, the critical engine phase, okay, but since the performances of the pilots, okay, they are not all the same, okay, we add an, an extra, an extra safety margin in order to make sure that even though we drop below the V2 in a specific point during our takeoff with a one engine operative, we won't fall from the skies, we won't stall, we won't lose the control of the plane, okay? So as you can see, the VMCA is always and must be always below the V2. Okay guys, so I hope you now understand what the VMCA is and you have a better understanding of what is the relationship between the V2 and the VMCA. If you have any question, please leave a comment below and then I will help you out. Also go to paloclimb.com where you can subscribe for free paddle training content. I wish you a great day and I'll see you on the next one.